Kim Williams asked me to demo this B. And I said, sure. So here I am. He's pretty easy, but he's kind of tedious because there's, um, you know, lots of legs, antennas, wings. So I have made him and made some uh, samples to show you how to finish him off. So the first thing we're going to do is um, make the bee. Now the bee can be done in any stripes you want, and it's a total of 66 rows. I'm going to only make one stripe because it's a lot quicker. <laughs> so we're going to begin with the head. We're starting with the head, and the head is 28 rows. Whoops. I always use the heel spring. You don't have to, but I do. So the 28 rows. That's the head. You can do the head in black, whatever color you want. Now I'm going to switch to black to make one large stripe. And what I like to do is the uh, faux Russian join. I don't know if you all know how to do that or not. Up through here, through here. And what you do is you loop the threads, yellow and the black. The black to black and yellow to yellow, and put the black in. It's slippery. And pull the yellow back through stitches that are about to be completed. Doing it this way locks in the two stitches, the two um, yarns and you don't need to worry about them coming undone. Just get the extra ends pieces inside and that's it. And now I'm going to do, I don't know, we'll just find out. Because it, it just needs to be a nice big one. That's 50 rows, so the rear end, the mom area will be yellow. <laughs> I'm going to switch back to yellow, do another faux Russian join. You get to see that again. Except my throat is getting stuck. Take the black yarn and loop it around like so. Yellow goes back into the yarn carrier. And the black is going to go, if I can get this right, back through the previous needles. <coughs> and then you just crank. Let the ends inside. They're good to go. Add my heel spring and crank the rest of 15 stitches. Well, that was interesting. Mistakes happen. I don't know why that popped out there. Oh, why am I doing that? All right, now we're done. That was a total of 66 rows. You can use any size um, stripes you want, large, small, whatever. We're going to, in the rear end area, you're going to cinch the bump. And the top, you're going to Kitchener. 
and uh, I'm not going to show you how to Kitchener because I think there was a class earlier and I am so slow at it, but I'll show you what to do after it's done Kitchener. Waste jar. Green because bees love green and flowers. You just want to catch the waste jar on there so it doesn't run. Inch or so, and that's it. So we're going to take this off. And it's basically a tube. So this is your head area and the nice stripe and then the bum. Um, the next thing I want to show you is all of these antennas, wings, and the legs are done in what's called flat stitch or flat knitting. And the easiest way for me to do it is I take out all the needles except for the number that you need to do your um, flat knit. And I like to, um, well, I've already done several. I've already done the legs and I've already done one of the antennas. And this is done the same way. It just depends on how long it needs to be done. It's just uh, like the wings are 215 rows. I don't want to sit here and crank 215 rows. So I've got uh, one intended to do, and it's the same way that you do the legs and the wings. So I'm going to remove all the needles except for seven. Question. Yes. Could you just take them out of work? I, yes, you can if you're careful. For oh, okay. me, okay. for me, um, the yarn kept catching on it, or okay. I knocked it. down the needles because my hand was in the way. But it was, you can also do an I cord. I am not um, able to do that very well, but the pattern calls for flat knitting, so that's where I'm showing it. But if you are able to do, uh, I cord, you can do an I cord. This hinge is stuck in here, so I need to get it out of the way. And it's in there. There we go. There. So we're just going to have seven left. The legs call for eight stitches, antennas call for seven stitches. You can make them wider, you can make them thinner, whatever you want for your little buddy that you're making. There. I like to do my flat knitting right here at this edge of the um, cylinder so that when it's going back it will count on your row counter and when it's going back the other way it counts your second row so you're not getting mixed up on your counting and you don't have to count in your head 215 times if you're doing the wings. Attach your bonnet. This gets a little fiddly, so you have to have your hands inside the cylinder to help keep it um, weighed it down. Add your buckle. Here comes the fun part. This is actually kind of fun. It's just takes a lot of time. You're going to go put it in and you're going to go all the way to the end until you hear the click. Okay? And you have to have your head spring on for this. 
and you're going to go back and forth. So you go take your uh, yarn carrier past each end, like all the way past those needles and back. That's all you do. Now we're going to switch to uh, Project Co Colors, the black. The antenna is 30 rows. And you want a long string to tie in the ends. Okay. And you're going to hold with your hand as much as you can. Bring it around. Let me get my heel spring back on in just a second. Now I have to change my counter back to one. I just did one row. So we're going to do 30 rows. And this is what I do all the way, just back and forth. I didn't go all the way past that needle. That's why it stopped like that. Yes, it does. It does. And when you pass the V around, you'll be able to feel the legs where they're, you can um, open them. And I just lost all the stitches. We're going to just pretend it's okay. What else can I do? Oh, it came out. <coughs> Not me. That's for sure. You want to be right down here and watch it? Well, this... I am messing up this one very well. Let's see if I can do it. So. This one's going to be pretty bad. <laughs> okay, so this one's going to be a little off, but emo. We're done here. You want a long tail. And maybe I won't use this one. We'll just have to have one antenna. But you get an idea. You can always take another one later and put it on. Yes. <laughs> have one of those I need some hooks under here to hang them. Thank you for telling me that. Always heel spring when you're doing um, flat knitting. Just like on the heels, you need to go back and forth. And you want just enough to stop it from unraveling. So there we go. And you can just take it off. And this is what it looks like. And it opens flat, but it curls in. All right, so you got one antenna here that's not acceptable, but that's okay. When you're done with your tube, you're going to Kitchener the top of the head closed. And when you're done with this long Kitchener stitch, you want a long thread out of one corner. So just stick it out of the corner. This is where it gets kind of fiddly to me, and it's it, you have to be able to work it uh, 
figure it out and just kind of work with it. You're going to take the two corners, fold them in, well, inside each other. Let's see if I can, sorry. You're going to fold the ends to end. Can you see that? All right. Now this is the hard part. You're supposed to, which is, I find it difficult, graph those two together. Now, if you're Edith Nielsen, you're perfect at this and you can't tell that there's a seam. But with me, you're going to probably see a seam. And you're, you will only stitch through the top layer of the fabric. Is that on the inside or the outside? This, oh, thank you. Outside. That's a good question. This is the outside. Now, there are two layers to both sides of this, and you only want the top layer. Could you do it so that's on the inside and then it would look? You would get a seam on the outside. You would have. Oh, that's true, you would. Yeah. I'll show you in just a minute what it looks like when it's finished and you'll have a better idea. So are you basically kitchenering there? Yes, but not very well. <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> I think I've messed up right here, but that's okay. And you don't need to do very many, just a little bit. So you're going to take, take your needle to the inside, pull it through. Okay, when you're done, this should be perfect. This is not, but you'll get an idea. You're stitching only the top layer of this. And underneath, it's not really stitched on the bottom. See? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're done catching or grafting. This is what she either calls it, grafting. Take it inside out. Do a couple of stitches to hold it in place. Leave a little bit of a tail to just leave it inside. Now this comes the fun part. Bumblebees are round, so we're going to stuff them. <laughs> you don't want to take, you don't take a great big wad of this and stuff it in there like that. You want to take little pieces and stuff them in a little bit at a time. Now, what you're going to do, oh, this looks awful. Okay, so you want to make the head just kind of stuff them pretty good. And this is going to be his eyes. Can you see that? Is, does it look even? I haven't even seen it yet. If it's not even, you can position it. Just adjust it a little bit. How's that look? Mm. 
Okay. Once that is done, you're going to take the yellow yarn. <coughs> you need a good bit because you're going to cinch up the neck now. And then we're going to stuff them some more. A regular darning needle works. I like to use um, double. Some use single threads, but I double it. <coughs> and the best way that I found to do a, a cinching at the neck or whatever you're wanting stitching on a toy is to go every other stitch around. You need to go, make sure you go all the way around. My little fellow there has uh, what they call shank buttons or mushroom shank buttons. It has um, a little loop on the back and it's rounded and it's sewn in. Those are not appropriate for <coughs> children under three. So if you're doing this for children, young children, you'll want to embroider the eyes or just leave them alone. And if you sew in uh, all the appendages, all the legs and the antennas very nicely, there it's a safe little toy. Edith is very generous with her knitting that she does. She donates quite a few of the cute little toys she loves making them. Her embroidery for her eyes are amazing. So if you find her on one of the groups, check out her projects that she has made. Also, this pattern is, she has given Earl Bacher permission to um, put this pattern and it's free on their website. Just go to their shop and look under pattern. And I forgot to tell you the name of it. His name is Honey tooth, be happy. Very cute. So you don't want to cinch him to where he's like, right? <laughs> just a little bit. Give him a little bit of a neck. And I just tie it in a knot. And then Put the two ends inside. Thread it through and just stick it inside. There's one. And here's the other set. Pulling out the stuffing, and it disappears inside. It's supposed to anyway. There we go. I'm gonna cut off any excess. Now his. So we need to still stuff uh, stuff him a little bit more. You can make someone downstairs has made him slightly different, so you might want to hunt her down. She's got it hanging from her, I don't remember her name, but she's got it hanging from her table. 
It's a few. Oh. Oh. It's, oh. It's like yeah. The thing though that that I I thought she, when she was describing um, her directions that it was an I chord of fourteen or ten, you know, thing, and I couldn't get it to do this. So I'm thinking the max because I didn't know about flat any. So I, the only max I could do for my all the little things was seven, and it became you know, became an I chord. But that's <laughs> and then something new for my next one. It'll be flat. She, I had, I asked her, I thought she did um, I chord. That's what I thought it was. So. And I had to ask her, and uh, she said she did it flat, which was good because she's requesting, I think, 14 stitches on one and eight on the other, and you can't do that on right. the I chord. Now, on the pattern, she calls for uh, closing the bum side the same way as the face. That takes a lot of time, so I liked to just cinch it. I know. Here it is. And you want to cinch it tight and close the area there. Did you already run, run your stitches? I did, sorry. <laughs> I did. You run you want to run your thread through uh, your project yarn while your uh, waist yarn is still on there and then remove your waist yarn and then cinch it. So thank you for reminding me that. That, boy, that was pretty tricky. Sometimes I can cinch this up very well. Sometimes I can't on any of the toys I make. I like to make toys. I keep them, most of them. <laughs> I don't give them to anyone. And uh, so if I can't cinch it up very well, I'll start closing it up back and forth. <coughs> However you want to do it is fine. And I have a drop stitched right in there. How nice. I'll catch it. There you go. That's how you fix a problem. <laughs> catch the stitch. Kitchener, is that what you're saying? The bottom closed. It's like you did the head, but we're stuffing it. I thought that would be a bummer. The bummer would be a bummer. The bummer would be a bummer. Okay, and all I do is take it and loop it through to hold the stitch like that. Run it back through the body out the side just because and snip. So now you have a B that doesn't look so well. There we go. And you could still shape its head and make them look a little bit better. So there's his head cinched. Bum is cinched. So now you're going to add the legs. The legs. One strip, you make three strips. And that's two legs.
you want your face to uh, be vertical like this and the eyes to the side, not like this, like this. Turn the bee upside down, pick a spot evenly, and all you have to do is take the center and you're just going to sew, if you can see this, up through the middle, across a couple of times and then you're good to go. And it's on there pretty well. And you can bring your, your yarn up under, get your next set of legs, sew them on, make sure it's even. So not You don't really need to be careful with this, getting your stitches. You just need to make sure that it is sewn onto the body. And I believe that this one's a little bit longer than the other side. I loop the leg there and do the next one. Does it matter where you put the open edges of the leg? I mean, do you hide them underneath? Uh, you mean on the ends here? No, oh, as you're sewing it on, you still oh. see that long open edge. No, it curls up. So you don't worry about it. Okay. No. Uh, these do curl up above the body a little bit. You can um, try and steam them down, but mine ends up curling. I'm not sure how you can change that. I was thinking of making them quite longer and then tie little knots on the end that might make it heavier where it would fall down. But if you don't want to put legs on, this is just as cute without the legs. Yeah, that's interesting. See? This is fine. If it wasn't for little kids, perhaps you could attach a bead or something to a little You could. And then with this, you just, like the bum, just catch it. And bury it in the body. the other end. The fun thing about this pattern is it begins with a tube and you can basically make just about anything from that tube. Think of this as a, a, 
a butterfly. You could make a butterfly. I was going to make an ant. I actually got the tube knitted, but I didn't have time to finish it. An ant would be really cute. Just make them longer, more than 66 rows, and have three sections. And then add the eggs to the middle. Eggs. <laughs> Legs. <laughs> I knew what you meant. <laughs> Now, this is how it came, mine came out first. The legs just kind of hung there, but I kept playing with them and would do this, and I steamed them, and they would fall down um, eventually, like it is now. So, you, know, you can do it any way you want. And the antenna will just sew on the one. The antenna, I did tie a knot on the end. And when you do these flat knitting, you do need to make sure that you cinch up the ends. This is live stitches on your waist yarn. You need to make sure you catch all those needles, I mean, threads, the loops, and then you can just cinch it up. What I like to do with the antennas is to make sure that it kind of hangs over. And I don't know a better way to do this other than pick a spot, grab about two, three stitches, and go back and forth. Now, if you're doing this for a child, you'll need to really make sure it's secure. back and forth until you feel like it's done. It's well enough secured. Oh, and he's trying to fly away or <laughs> and you cinch it, um, secure it, bring it back through the body. And cut off the end. He does have a stinger. I don't have one made for this one, but you can see there. It's made just the same way as <laughs> it's made just the same way as the other pieces. Flat knit. Flat knit. Yeah, flat knitting. All right. So we're pretending he's got his both antennas on because the other one just didn't come out right. He's just special. He's special, all right. <laughs> Now the yarn I picked out for the wings is Knit Picks uh, gl Glimmer. Undyed, it's white. Can you see the little sparkles? Oh, oh yeah. I, I just, I thought that was cute. And all you do is make a bow. And unfortunately, I forgot to bring my white yarn to make it. The way it's supposed to be, so we're just going to use black. You can see what I'm doing. All you do is is um, make a bow. Like you don't tie it; just make a bow. Can you see that? Position it to where you want it. like so, and then 
you're going to tie it down. I make the uh, wings even if you can. And all you're going to do is sew back and forth really tight, whoops, really tight to hold those pieces together. There he is. And you're going to go really tight. Can you see that? black. And do it several times. You don't want it to come undone. As many times as you like. And then I will go through and sort of get the pieces together, sew them together. And then just, you've got it cinched there and just take it and tie it off. I've got another end to tie off here. This end needs to be covered. It's basically it. It's a little time consuming, but these are a lot of fun to make. Mm. If you use a different size cylinder, you can make them in several sizes. Different mm. sizes would be fun. This is the catch the thread. Whoops, missed it. You make a little crown and have a crown. I had a crown. It's downstairs. I totally forgot to bring it up. I crocheted a crown for it. Oh, fabulous. Really cute. And I totally forgot about it. That is really super cute. Now I can put the instructions for the crown. I'll put a picture up on Facebook with the crown and let me just stick it. There he is. It doesn't look bad because of the black either. It does. Uh, 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 with, with this? Yeah. No, it doesn't okay. look bad. Okay. Well, good. <laughs> so I'll pass around this fellow. I don't know what size um, eyes he has, but I thought he's cute. Your friend is there online. Oh, my friend. Edith, right? Oh, yeah. oh, oh, hi, Edith. Oh, I should say you right. <laughs> hi, Edith. Thank you for the pattern. We are so thankful you were able to share it with us. And I hope you enjoyed the little video. Thank you.